Uepa. Number nine, volcano surfing. I push off. Moments later, I'm S turning down the pumice. The advent of this 21st century extreme sport has been credited to Zoltan Istvan, and it involves a bumpy ride to the dark side of an actual volcano. That's right, a couple thousand years ago, the poor residents of Pompeii were essentially buried alive thanks to Mount Vesuvius. And now, adventurers fight back against volcanoes, so to speak, by getting all up in their business. Go! Yeah! Times have changed, of course, but one must always be aware of getting all carved up by chunks of ash and flying debris. Oh yeah, the explosive lava is something to think about as well. Number eight, ice climbing. It's a hundred meter vertical ice shield, nearly rock hard because the sun never hits it. We all know that mountain climbing is for pansies, right? So that's why this slippery sport has gained such momentum in recent years. We're kidding, of course, as both rock and ice climbers are equally adventurous and crazy. Whether you prefer alpine ice or water ice, the basic laws of nature apply when climbing up a frozen waterfall. One does not simply ice climb. One comes ready with all the appropriate gear, prepared for perhaps the most exhilarating feeling in the world, and maybe a nasty fall. Number seven, high lining. Some of you may already highline on a daily basis, but probably not quite like this. My name is Philippe Petit. I'm a wire walker. Ah! Oh, Featured in the 2015 film The Walk, highlining is the form of slacklining that is done at challenging heights. This sport requires some intellect when setting up the anchor points, and of course, one must be in tip-top shape and be able to focus too, as the ultimate fail would be plummeting to your certain death. It's only been since 2010 that slacklining has really become popular, particularly in the form known as tricklining, and it builds on the examples of past high-wire artists for more creative expressions of freedom. Number 6. Skateboarding Alright, so skateboarding probably doesn't seem that extreme these days. At least, not if you're at the Bart Simpson it's faster than walking skill level. But every self-respecting skater knows that some broken bones are necessary if you want to call yourself the real deal. We don't really need to explain the essence of this extreme sport, as YouTube has become a haven for countless skateboarding fails, and also some rather impressive feats. The activity is something of a gateway sport for extreme individuals, and a culture in its own right. You either skate or you don't. Number five, creaking, also known as steep creaking. Sure, one may enjoy kayaking or canoeing, but that doesn't necessarily mean you enjoy literal downward spirals off waterfalls. But if this does sound like you, then you're a creaker. Congrats on having a name. What do you need besides a kayak and a death wish? Well, a first aid kit might come in handy, and you'll certainly need a throw bag and face mask. Those living in the Appalachians have come to know creaking all too well, and there's nothing like experiencing a first descent, whether it's your own or with somebody else. Beware of chicken heads and sieves, and always creak with confidence. Number four, ice cross downhill, also known as downhill ice cross. I'm high in my life right now, there's nothing like it. The average person typically struggles when trying to lace up a pair of ice skates, and even more so with the actual act of skating. But if you grew up playing hockey and know how to maintain a certain balance, then you'll find some value with ice cross downhill. Holy moly! Hey! Do you think they can go any faster than me? Here's what happens. Skaters shoot down a walled track and try not to break their asses. It's just like downhill skiing, except with sharp skates and hard ice. As you can imagine, the average ice cross downhill fail will make anyone wince especially if you happen to be executing the failure in question. Number three, motocross. You gotta always jump something. Speaking of ice, the one and only Vanilla Ice once reigned supreme in this extreme sport, as he was reportedly a three-time Grand National Champion in Dallas. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go! Go Ninja, go Ninja, go! You could say that motocross was the next step up for skaters during the 80s, along with BMX riding. Numerous sub-competitions have emerged from this vehicular activity, whether it be freestyle, supercross, or whatever competitors come up with next. Some fly high, while others keep it low. But motocross has long been a favorite among your more liberal motorcycle enthusiasts. 
Number two, free climbing. Now the big question. Are you an aid climber or a free climber? Not sure? Well, if you're the former, you'll need some help reaching your destination. But if you're the latter, then you're on your own, literally. You know, you commit, you're like, I'm doing this, here I go. But then after like a couple hours of being all committed, you're like, man, I'm tired. Sure, free climbers take the appropriate measures to prevent, you know, death. But the point of it all centers on the trendy concept of do it yourself. There's always that one glance down inside of the corner of your eye once you like make the turn and look you're like oh man like i am high when you're a kid you climb trees but if you're an experienced free climber you reach a bit higher some question the motivation of free climbers which does make sense but perhaps you just don't understand the feeling of exhilaration it'd be sort of like asking a gymnast what they're thinking about while they're doing the routine ideally they're just executing it perfectly before we unveil our number one pick here are some honorable mentions Good to be out here, to be back on the trail, making miles. Number one, wingsuit flying, also known as wingsuiting. If you're too scared to skydive or base jump, then you definitely won't be wingsuit flying. With the suit itself emerging in various forms since the late 90s, one may actually transform into a Birdman, a Batman, or even a Squirrel, depending on your stylistic preferences while practicing this sport. Of course, a parachute will be needed for a safe landing, and you may also need a hefty set of balls or a sturdy pair of ovaries. With the arrival of jet-powered wingsuits in recent years, there's no telling how this extreme sport will evolve for space oddities in the coming decades. Let's 